Okay, today I'm gonna to talk to you about um, how to mix PC7. PC7 is um, probably the most common epoxy in ceramics. There is also a PC11, which is a, a wider version or a much lighter version. PC7 uh, by itself is kind of a dark gray. Um, but uh, this is found uh, typically at Ace Hardware. Uh, some Home Depots have it, but you uh, usually have better luck at Ace Hardware. Um, this is a two-part uh, epoxy. It comes in smaller tubes that are uh, old uh, photo canisters that are, you know, so they're about maybe a quarter of this size. And, um, but the nice thing with this epoxy is that it's very, very strong. And it's also um, thicker, so it doesn't it doesn't run like a um, you know like a two part um, you know clear epoxy. Um, this uh, will um, ha you know it has a consistency a lot like clay actually, so a lot like kind of a, like a wet clay. And so um, the only downside with this really is that it uh, it does take a long time to set. It's really best to have it set overnight. So if you have to glue something to your work that, um, you know, say is on the side of the piece or something, you know, you really should, you know, get everything ready beforehand and prop the piece and be able to have it just set with gravity there, um, you know, so that you can get a, a good set. So what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna actually glue anything in ceramics right now. Um, but I'm rather just going to show you, you know, how you would go about mixing this and, and measuring it out and everything. So some of the things that you're going to want to have um, before you get started, of course, your epoxy. Um, I always have my um, epoxy fettling knife. So I have a separate um, fettling knife and I've used the same fettling knife for eight or nine years. And um, I just wipe the epoxy off of it. And so um, then you're going to want to have a piece of scrap cardboard. Um, I usually like to have some, you know, small pieces of, um, of uh, paper towel here that I can wipe off my epoxy knife and the tools I'm going to mix it with. And so again, I've, you know, you can, these are just shims, wooden shims that you get at the hardware store. I like to round off the edges on the hand that I'm going to mix it with um, so that it just doesn't hurt the inside of your hand. Um, but again, I've used these for a long time. You can see there's like a patina on them. So you don't have to throw everything away here. You know, you just wipe it off with a paper towel. And so what you'll do is you'll notice that this epoxy here is, again, has two parts. One part is a, a really dark black and the other part's kind of a light gray. Don't switch your lids. So make sure that, you know, especially when you first get them, there is not gonna be a lot of extra epoxy on the lid here. But don't switch these back and forth like that because then you'll find your lid will stick to that. So just make sure you get your lids, you know, squared away. Um, and then the other critical thing is don't use the same scoop to scoop this one out and then go into here because you'll mix the epoxies and then you'll have hard chunks that develop in there. So always have two things to scoop with. And um, so I'll just start with one here and I'm just gonna start with a small amount. And what I do is, the, the trick with this stuff is that it's so thick, so sometimes it's hard to tell if you have this the right quantities. You're supposed to mix this one to one. So, you know, uh, the same amount of this one and, and, you know, the same amount of this one. So what I do is I like to kind of swirl it into a little, kind of a little round mound here. And um, and that makes it a little easier for me to see exactly how much I have here. Okay, so you can see, you can see the consistency of this epoxy too. It It's not gonna fall off of that, you know, it's a, uh, so it's much thicker than your typical, like the, it's much thicker than the kinds that you see that come in like a syringe that have like two syringes like that. Now what I'll do is I'm just gonna wipe this off and it won't harden without that other thing on there, the other amount on there anyway, but you know, I've used these same sticks for years. So you just wipe it off and um, I'm gonna cap this one. Okay, now I'm gonna take my other one, even though I wiped this off, you know, you just never know, you might have a residual epoxy there. It's always best to just use a different stick, okay? So I'm gonna, you know, then what I'm gonna do is next to this one, I don't, see I have a little bit on the cardboard here, I don't wanna put the other amount here, because then what's gonna happen is I'm gonna get some of this epoxy onto this stick. So I wanna do 
you know, have, have a little bit of separation there. And then I'm gonna start to swirl it into a, you know, another ball here. Now that I, since I did the same thing with this one, it's much easier for me to see if I have the right amount here, okay? Um, so this might sound a little weird, but <laughs> a lot of times I will keep doing this until sometimes it looks a little bigger than this one and sometimes it looks a little smaller. And if I feel like my thoughts are kind of going back and forth on it like that, then it's probably just about right. So the, the black has a slightly different consistency than the gray here. So it's a little smoother. And sometimes it'll kind of stick up a little higher. You can kind of see, if you can see the edge there, you can kind of see it's just a little bit higher than the gray. So what I try to do is I try to just keep kind of going back and forth with it until you think it's the right amount. If it's a little bit too much, you know, just, just take a little snip of it off like that and then put that back in there. As long as you don't have any of that gray epoxy on this stick, you can put it back in there. Okay, so, um, you know, just make sure that's the reason why you keep these two separate, you know? So now that it looks like I have a pretty good kind of even amount, I'll make sure I don't have a lot extra on this. And sometimes just to make sure, especially with a small amount like this, I will just clean this off with my paper towel. Okay, because I don't want to have any extra that's sitting here or on my stick here that will throw off the ratio. And while I'm thinking of it, I will usually, since I go through a lot of this stuff, I usually uh, date the, um, the epoxies here, the, the two parts, uh, for a couple reasons. One, I want to know how long it's been. Um, you know, sometimes it takes me a while to get through these. Uh, this also will let me know that it's the same batch. Like, cause sometimes I'll have multiple ones. Like I have another set here and I don't want to mix these up. So I don't want to have like some new epoxy and some old epoxy mixing at the same time. So this one I can see, it looks like I bought this on December 28th, 2019. So that way I have the same set here. Okay. So now that I have my two parts here, um, I'm going to start by just mixing this together like that. And this, this, one of the nice things about PC7 in that the two parts are different color. So you can see when it's not mixed correctly. So this would not be mixed well at all because it's, there's different colors in there. You know, you can see the darker section there. And so what I try to do is I try to just go back, you know, and then kind of swirl it back and forth. And even now you can see that there's still some areas that have a little swirl of, of light gray, like there's a little swirl of white, light gray there. You can also see it here. So, you know, I just make sure and get as much of the off of, off the, as much of the epoxy off of the stick as possible. And, um, you know, you could do this with like a popsicle stick or something like that too, but, um, you know, I like to use it. I, I like to use these because they're easy to hold. You know, the stick is wide. If you're mixing a lot of epoxy, like this is a relatively small amount. Um, but uh, you know, if you're mixing a lot, this is much easier to use than a, than a um, popsicle stick. And this part here where I'm scraping um, almost completely off of the cardboard, this is much easier to do with, um, with a, uh, uh, you know, a, a piece of wood that has like a large flat surface on it. A popsicle stick has a rounded surface, so it doesn't scrape off the, the epoxy. So, you know, what I've done is I've actually sanded this down a little bit so it's nice and smooth. And, um, you know, like I said, you can use the same stick for years. You know, I've used this so long that it's almost got a nice patina on it. I also will round the edges off here so, you know, um, it doesn't hurt your hand. And I would mix this another few minutes, just kind of going back and forth, you know, and I kind of make sure and get it all off the cardboard every once in a while. And I don't like to use like wood or anything like that. Cardboard works fine and you just throw this away when you're done. It's, it doesn't make sense to use pieces of wood or things like that. Don't ever use bats or anything like that in the studio. Um, just find a piece of cardboard 
and that way when you're done you don't leave the residue of your epoxy on somebody's you know wooden bat or anything like that at the studio it's so much easier just to use this up and then be able to just throw this cardboard away okay and so that's properly mixed now it's all one color every time i do that i'm not seeing any other color so when i do this long flat like that see that's all the same color and it's all the same color on the stick too and so that shows me that i have it properly mixed um, PC7 you can actually stain so sometimes if I want to have a really black epoxy I will put um, a black mason stain just a little bit you don't need very much because uh, this is already pretty dark um, but you can see the consistency here you know like it, it sometimes will sag a little bit when it's drying but um, but you can see how thick it is like it's not gonna fall off at the end of that stick and so um, you know but again this is not going to be set um, it, it'll start to stiffen in a few hours um, it won't reach full strength for 24 hours though and so make sure that you have a um, a safe you know place to put your work if you're gonna have to let it sit for a while um, you know but this is workable now for several hours you know so the nice thing about this this um, epoxy is that you're not in a rush to put this on like you you literally would have you know two to three hours um, even to, to to work with this and and sometimes people like to have it actually set up just a tiny bit so it's even thicker and then when you do that you can actually mold it with your fingers um, almost like you would clay so um, so that's it with the PC7 um, just remember long set time but it is um, extremely strong and um, it's a great epoxy to use um, for ceramic or or for you know other mixed media uses too so the main thing make sure you have you know equal amounts of both materials um, and then you know if when I was you know if I'm applying this I would just get a little scoop of it like that on my uh, you know uh, on my fettling knife and that allows you to control it really well you know so you could just you know you can kind of pull up just a little bit there and then apply it however you want you know um, and then of course I just clean this off with my paper towel and I'll clean this off with my paper towel and I'll just wipe this I'll wipe this a couple times you know I use like usually a couple of these paper towels and just make sure and get all that epoxy off of there and then um, and then when you're done with this, you know, you, when you have, if you have ex extra epoxy, then you just throw it away and you don't have to ruin a studio board or anything. Um, so that's how you mix PC7 and um, yeah, it's good stuff.